In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Screencastify to easily create screen recordings, and you can do it for free. Now, the thing about Screencastify is that it's a Google Chrome extension, so it lives here in Google Chrome. So this tutorial is pretty specific to people that use Google Chrome, and of course that includes all Chromebook owners. And in a previous video of mine, I talked about Screencast-O-Matic, which is a great free option. It works really well, and there is an option that works on Chromebooks. If you're interested in learning about Screencast-O-Matic, please watch my video. But other people prefer alternatives, and Screencastify is a great alternative, especially if you want your video to be easily synced and organized into your Google Drive account. So let's jump right in and take a look at Screencastify, how to get it, and how to use it in Google Chrome. So here I am on my Google homepage, and you can see that I have a button here, a shortcut that takes me to the Google Chrome store and specifically the extensions part of that. So if I click on it, it takes me to the Chrome Web Store extensions. If you don't see that on your Google homepage, that's okay. You can just do a search for Google Chrome Store and the first result should be the right one. It takes you right to the same place. So I'm gonna do a search for Screencastify. It brings up this extension here and I'll just click Add to Chrome. At this point, Google notifies me of what Screencastify is gonna do, and I'm okay with that. So I click Add Extension, and immediately, because I am signed into my account, look what happens. It adds Screencastify right here into my list of Google Chrome extensions. For you, if you're not signed into your browser, you might need to do that in order to fully install this into your browser. Okay, now that that's installed, if I want to create a video, all I have to do is click and maybe open up a new tab or whatever I need to do and go to a website, let's say, that I want to record. So let's say I'm a teacher and I'd like to show my students a video demonstration of how to use a tool like Flipgrid, which is a great teacher and student tool. As you probably guessed, I do have a video tutorial to show you how to use it. But to create a recording of this, all I have to do now is go over here to the Screencastify Chrome extension and I clicked on it and it does want me to sign into my Google account. That's step one to get this fully set up. So I click sign in with Google. I'm gonna click on my account and allow Screencastify to do the following things. Once I click allow, I'm on to step two. This is encouraging me to unlock all features by enabling the camera and microphone and also the drawing and annotation tools. So I click next and I get some pop-ups. It's requesting permission for these things. So I say allow, and then I say allow. Next, I'm supposed to say what my role is. Am I a student, a corporate user? I'm actually an educator, so I'll click that. And what level? I could put a couple different levels here, I guess, but I'll go with grade school. So now I'm done, and a nice video opens up to kind of show me some of the steps for recording. But at this point, I'm just gonna close out of this tab. I'm ready to record my Flipgrid video. Now you should only have to do those three steps that we just did with Screencastify just one time, at least on any particular computer. Once you're signed in, you should be good to go. All right, so to start my tutorial on Flipgrid, I'm just gonna click here. And as you can see, there is an advertisement here trying to get me to upgrade to the professional version of Screencastify. If I do that, I can create videos that are longer than 10 minutes. So that is one of the limitations of the Screencastify Lite free account, is my videos have to be 10 minutes or less. Also, I can only create up to 50 videos per month. Now, if you think about that, that's pretty good. It would be kind of hard to create more than 50 videos a month. So this free version of Screencastify, I think really is a good one. Next, I need to decide what do I want to record? Do I want to record a particular browser tab? Do I want to record my desktop? Do I want to record the webcam only? In this case, I really could pick probably either one, the browser tab or my desktop. I'm gonna go with desktop in this case. My microphone is turned on. Next to microphone, it says select. And as you can see, there's a meter next to that. And that shows me that Screencastify can already hear my voice. It already can sense my voice. But I wanna to click to make sure that it's using the right microphone, the built-in mic or an additional mic that you might have plugged in and in my case, it's set up properly. Next, I have to decide if I want a webcam. If I do this, it will record my face in addition to my voice and everything that I do on the computer. 
And a lot of people like this option. Just so you know, the educational research on this shows that in many cases, enabling the webcam so that the person who's talking can be seen in the video really acts as more of a distraction in most cases. Now there are exceptions for that, but in most cases it's most effective if you turn off the webcam. But we'll try it both ways. Next, I can just click record and you'll see the webcam will start up here. And then here on the screen, I get to select what to record. And I'm just going to record the entire screen, not just an application window. So even though I chose to record the desktop, if you recall, it's still going to record anything that it can see here on my screen. All right, I'll go ahead and click share. Three, two, one. I get a countdown and then it begins. Hi students, I'd like to show you how to use this wonderful website called Flipgrid. Now as I record this, Screencastify is recording everything I do with the mouse, everything that I do with scrolling. It also records clicks, as you can see. There's a circle that appears around the mouse when I click. Also, I want you to see that you can resize the webcam recording if you want to, just by clicking and dragging the corner. You can also close out of it if you're done with it. And I am done with it. Now while you're recording your screencasts or videos, You'll notice here in the lower left corner that you do have some tools. You can pause the recording and then resume when you're ready to resume. We also have some options for the mouse pointer. You can see that there's a little halo effect if you wanna turn that on, and there are other options as well. You also have a whiteboard marker, basically. So as I just did, you can click and drag to draw on the screen, to circle things, or draw arrows to things and that's all recorded. We do have an eraser as well, if you want to erase that stuff. And you can toggle the webcam on by clicking this button and turn it off by pressing it again. We also have a timer if you want to time yourself as you record, and then the X actually hides those options. All right, let's say I'm done with my tutorial on Flipgrid. I can just go down here and click Stop Sharing. I get a countdown, and then it begins. And you saw what happened. It took me to the Screencastify website and my video recording starts immediately. I can click and drag to advance through the recording if I would like, and I can play from there. Mouse pointer, you can see that there's a, a little halo effect. Up here across the top, I have some options and tools that I can use. You can see that there's an option to crop or trim the video. If I click that, I countdown and then it, it takes me to another screen and it starts my video. And then I can use these scissors here to trim out the beginning of the video if I would I like. And I can also trim out the end of the video. Now, unfortunately, to be able to save this edit, I would have to go premium. I'd have to upgrade to the paid account. So I'm gonna have to cancel out of that and go back to this page here. Similar to crop and trim, there is an edit option. At this point, it wants me to sign into my Google account again. And this is another paid feature that I would have to upgrade in order to use. So I'm gonna X out of that for now. There's also a delete button to just trash this and start over. And we also have a way to share the video online, either to YouTube or to your Google Drive account. I'm gonna close that for now. There is an option to save to disk, including export as MP4. Notice that that is a paid feature. And so that's why some people do stick with Screencast-O-Matic, because you can save an MP4. But in Screencastify, there is a nice option to save the video to disk. It downloads it as a WebM file. And I'll show you what that's like in just a minute. But before I do, look at this panel at the right. If I want to, I can enable people to comment on my videos and those comments will appear next to my videos in Google Drive. Notice that it's also uploaded automatically to my Google Drive account. And I can copy the link to that file in my Google Drive account just by clicking here. I can also click View on Drive. It'll open up my Google Drive account and show me that video. Here it is, it's still being processed, but this is the video that I just recorded that's being automatically saved to my Google Drive. It gives me some details about the video here as well. Okay, I want to see what this downloaded file is like, so I'm just gonna click this arrow here, Show in Finder, and here it is. I've downloaded it a couple of times. Now if I double click on this, it doesn't really open. That's the downside to this not being an MP4 file. However, if I right click on it and say open with Google Chrome, I get a countdown and then it begins. 
The video starts right in my web browser, and that's what a WebM file is for. It's for playing video files through a browser. Now the good side of that is if you do share this video, whether to YouTube or through your Google Drive account, people will be able to easily watch the video through their browser. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and consider connecting with me on my social media accounts like Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And definitely do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And when you do subscribe, please click the bell next to the subscribed button. If you do, you'll be notified whenever I post another video and watch for another video from me at least every Monday. If you'd like to support my YouTube channel, consider becoming a supporter of mine through my Patreon account, and you'll see a link to that in the description below. Speaking of Patreon, I want to do a quick shout out to my $5 Patreon supporters, and they are Mahela Nagina and Kurt Topple and Sharman Natoli. I want to send out a special thank you to those $5 Patreon supporters. I'm also grateful for all of my Patreon supporters. Mm -hmm.